Um, Jerry Falwell Jr. Yeah. Oh, no. Is he okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Stuck in the pool, boy. <laughs> I think, to be precise, his pool boy's no, no. stuck in his wife. Right. He's watching. See, what happened was, today, a news story broke that their former pool boy, who somehow became their business partner, was in a three-way relationship with Jerry Falwell and his wife. Which would be fine. Right. There is Now, listen, we want to stress this. There is nothing wrong with consenting adult, uh, consenting adults, consenting adults doing legal things in the privacy of their own home. Nothing at all. If everybody's cool with it, if everybody's happy, perfectly fine. Nobody getting hurt. Everybody happy. Awesome. Except. Except. When you're the ninth sexual morality per police. Yeah. When, when you've built your entire career on telling other consenting adults not to do those things. Right. Fuck. So apparently the, the pool boy was having sex with Falwell's wife and Falwell would be watching. Now there is a, a, a term that all these alt-right love to, to, an insult they love to use. What is that one, Tara? I'm trying to think. Gosh, um, I feel like it starts with a C. I think if it you does. If my Twitter feed, you'll find it used. Yeah, I feel like people that. call my husband that a lot. Yeah, okay. yeah. It rhymes with clock. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, so it gets better. Um, not only did this news drop the very first day of the Republican National Convention, Liberty University, which was started by Falwell's father, it's the Christian conservative university, um, announced Falwell was resigning. Oh, no. And then Falwell announced, no, I'm not. I'm taking an indefinite leave. <laughs> I'm taking an indefinite leave. So here's the best part. What this means is, technically right now, if you are a Liberty U student, your tuition is paying Jerry Falwell Jr. to be a Nine. Did you say a cook? Nine. Okay. <laughs> Cook would be a different thing. I mean, if he wants to, it'll be yeah. a show. But, you know, it's 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 kind of... I just... That's beautiful, isn't it? You're paying this man. Which party is mad about paying people not to work again? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> we don't want to pay people to stay home just because of a silly little pandemic i just i i love i just it's so beautiful it's just it is on so well, many after levels after a few of the speeches tonight cocaine is trending on twitter i saw that <laughs> somebody had very tiny pupils talking about his daddy i wonder why so he yeah was really sweaty so if you're interested in how things are going in america um not great not not having not great which before anybody's like, well, it's probably hot in there. He's under lights. Let me tell you something. This is the hottest room in our house. Mm -hmm. The fact that I run my flat iron literally raises the, raises the temperature in here like five full degrees. I have three lights currently pointing at me. Do I look like a sweaty night? Yes, no, because I know makeup. <laughs> and also, I've never seen lights also, make I don't people. Do cocaine. Never seen lights make pupils dilate like that. That's that's not right. how light works. They do the opposite. opposite. But also, I didn't yeah. do sixteen rails of cocaine before getting on the air. I think his wife did. You see, the the thing about all this is is at least with our candidate, we can be honest and say, yeah, we, we're not really fond of him, but we're not crazy is. about him. He's a he'll be fine. He is what he is. We're not up there going. This is the best man who ever lived. Right. Everything He's is our awesome. savior. Yeah, we're. We can admit our sucks. Yeah, we're all like, you know what? He's, he's what we got. Okay. You know, it's, it's what and we he's got. A, and he's 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 a nice, he's a heck of a nice guy. Kind of. He's nice to kids with a stutter. Yeah. Is, he loves his family. Like he's not, at the, the very least, he's not going to put brown kids in cages. That's all I can say. I mean, come on, night's sake. Well, well, such a low night bar. Anyway. 
with that in mind. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? Hang on, I'm gonna check real quick. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> Run the credits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, that's better. Where's the thing? Here it is. Okay. <laughs> that was kind of magic. Ah. Uh, Live, each, everybody. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air Alliance, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? And uh, a lot of car shit this week. We'll get to there. Like a lot. Like surprising Has amount. Burned or blown their dick off this week? No. Awesome. <laughs> we're out of that. We're, we're, we're out of those woods. So. But. Uh, the dick woods. Well, I wouldn't say that precisely. I mean, it, it, it's a different kind of dick. Um. This is this is of course in its own way shooting yourself in the dick, just in a different sort of fashion. Metaphorically. Yeah. Um. So this is someone, and Tara. I promise you, you've never heard of this dude. Never. Like he he is definitely a do you know who I am? Big energy kind of guy, but you've never heard of him. Squid Billy Star Stuart Baker fired for extremely offensive Facebook posts. The news here being that Squid Billy's was still on the air. What is Squid? I knew it. I knew she was going to ask that. You don't need to know. Tara. Why is there a little squid in a Confederate flag hat? Because that's all right. Tara, here's the show in a nutshell, and you're going to hate it. It's a story about a bunch of squids who live in the Georgia hills and they're racist hillbillies. They're squid billies. Why would squids live in the Georgia? Because it's funny. Shut up. They're deep ocean okay. animals. Because you haven't had enough weed and then it will be funny. Because it comes on at midnight on the freaking weekend. Okay. Smoke some pot and it'll be funny. Damn it. Okay. Well, anyway. This guy who you've never heard of, most people have never heard of, decided he was going to take a pot shot at Dolly fucking Parton. Because in the past weeks, Dolly Parton uh, said, um, of course, Black Lives Matter. Um, she's very... Dolly she came, Parton came out as a decent human being. Baker posted the following on Facebook. Uh, who goes? He goes by the stage name of Unknown Henson. For some reason, um, he called Dolly Parton a quote freak titted old Southern bimbo and quote a slut. He, he then went on to tell liberal fans to quote unfollow me please because I don't want you un-Americans around. Have fun forsaking your own race, culture, and heritage. Now, the first thing that leaps out to me is. Number one, you're in a fight with Dolly Parton. That is literally America's sweetheart. She has been right. Like bored. who doesn't like Dolly Parton? Fuck it. She's been since you well, know, Republicans now, yeah. but she's been America's sweetheart since the fucking 1980s. She is. How much yeah. of her money does, doesn't she? She do that <laughs> thing with all of her money and buy and set up libraries and shit, like or books she, for kids. She mails books to yeah. underprivileged kids. Like shit. if you write her and say you need books, she will just mail your kid books. She's fucking She's awesome. like the nicest person on the planet. All right, so that's number one. And number two, when you're calling people race traitors in so many words, you kind of hit a plateau. Yeah, you're not the good guy. But he thought he was. He thought, I've. Got, he did not expect the fact that the people who created the show that you need to be so high to enjoy, um, said um they fired him by tweet um oh, no. we are extremely offensive we are aware of the extremely offensive and derogatory social media post made last week by Stuart d baker the views he expressed do not reflect our own personal values um 
So yeah, production of Squidbillies will continue without Mr. Baker. Expect immediately. I don't know how you thought, man, you come to Queen, you better not miss. Right, you came for Dolly. You came for fucking Dolly Parton, and you did it with, with fucking, I mean, you, the, your race and heritage, motherfucker. That's, that's not, you don't say, you, you don't, your race, no. What have you done? What the hell have you done? He then posted a follow-up, was like, all pissy, he's like, well, I lost my cartoon show, thanks, guys. Oh, diddos. Like, it was our fault, and not the people who were doing like, oh, we don't, we do not want to be involved in this shit. Uh. Like, it wasn't his fault. No. Also, if, if he's on a cartoon show that is based on Southern culture. Yeah. And he came for Dolly. Came right? for fucking Dolly Parton. Even if he didn't say a bunch of racist shit, if the whole show is about Southern culture and you come for Dolly, you're probably fucked. Yeah. You, it's, yeah. So that's just, I love the, the nerve. Of, I, I'm bigger than Dolly Parton. I got huh. this. Look, did you, don't you know? I'm a squid. I'm Come a on. cartoon squid. I'm a, what has she ever done? I'm a cartoon squid. She's only the queen of the Opry. Yeah, I mean, she, the fucking fuck. She still makes fucking music. What was that, that one Jolene she did with uh, Pentatonix? That was like fucking yeah. awesome. And this guy tours clubs sometimes. Ooh. Anymore. Like you're not even the most famous cartoon squid because we already have a Squidward. Right, because when I when I posted this on Twitter, people were like, "Wait, what did Squidward do?" They were right. like, people were like legit worried that Squidward was like fucking evil now. Like, no, no, like, don't you're worry. Not even the most famous cartoon <laughs> squid, and that's a niche fucking market. I know, right? Of all the you no, know, you're still. You know, you're still you're still kind of under the under the radar there. Uh because I've heard of Squidward. Yeah, yeah. I, I, heard I know I am the or I personally am the arbiter of what is culturally relevant, <laughs> as you all know. Uh so next one. Do you remember when you were in school and especially when you were like middle school, elementary school, your your math teacher should all be always be like, now you need to know this. Because this yeah. will be important to you in real life. And then it wasn't. Well, no. We, well, we, it is for him. He does statistics all We day. all kept saying, oh, that's... Pfft, what am I ever... What am I ever going to use this? Well. No one injured in one lane bridge collapse near Westphalia. And you're like, oh, no, what happened? Missouri Highway State Patrol Troop F reported to the Pentecostal Bridge near Westphalia. Uh, There's a bridge called Pentecostal Bridge. The Pentecostal Bridge. Fucking okay, Missouri, man. Collapsed after a semi-truck attempted to cross it. The truck carrying feed tried to cross the bridge on Monday afternoon. The bridge had a posted sign of a five-ton weight limit. So it, it tells you how much this, this much, no more. The truck was carrying 30,000 pounds over the weight limit of the bridge. That's a lot. So it 50, five, five tons, that, that was 10,000 pounds. That's the most it could do. Dude was carrying 40,000, which is a lot more. Um, and if you want to see, whoops a daisy, the shit done broke. There we go. There's, there's, there's a, that was a bridge um, at one point. It's not now, but it was a bridge. Um, this isn't even the hard math, you know? This isn't even like trig or some no. shit. This wasn't even any conversion shit. Like the rest of the world uses sane me measurements. They're like on it's it's a base ten measurement. It goes ten and the, 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 the decimals on it. We just like whatever size the king's feet were will be the size of measurement. 
Which is really funny because we're the people who kicked the king out, but. Right. But we kept the measurement, though. Yeah, like, I suck at math, and I can figure that out. Like, more than five tons. Okay, ton is 2,000 pounds. That's 10,000 pounds. Right. I'm carrying 40,000, and that's more. <laughs> that's as many as four tens, and, and that's, that's terrible. Because, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 ours makes no, our, our, I can understand, we have feet becomes yards. Yeah. Becomes, what, mile? It's, it's feet, yards, miles, am I wrong? I feel like I'm missing something I mean, in there. there's an acre in there, and that... I don't even know how much an acre <laughs> is. <laughs> but. And then we measure stuff like football fields. Yeah. How many like football, football fields? fields. <laughs> well, football field is 100 yards. And I mean, we're really just the worst. Even still, it wasn't the hard stuff. You weren't like converting <laughs> ounces to pints or some man, fucking ounces, pints, gallons. That, that hurts my soul. That shit. We weren't even doing that's, that. That's what this is for. That's what your fucking phone is for. <laughs> it wasn't even the hard shit. This was the this was the bare minimum. The little yeah. stuff. Yeah. Pounds to tons. That one's not that's not all that tricky. We got you there. And you still couldn't do that. Pounds to tons. Like you just cut off all the zeros and you have like third grade multiplication. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, this is literally grade school shit. <sighs> uh as he tried to go back around the corner to try and get straightened out, he was striking it. Uh, so he continued to go back and forth, racking the rock of the guardrail. Once he eventually started to try to make the turn again, he struck. Oh, no. So he tried to make a Yui on the bridge, on the one lane bridge. In his four times the weight limit truck. Yeah. Which means he was just kind of chilling in the in the weakest part of that bridge. Yeah. When you would have been better off just powering through and going over. Do you have things to say? Yeah, that guy's stupid. Great, <laughs> you can't and even drive. There's a certain point at which it's better to keep going <laughs> forward than to go back. Yeah, you just got to drive through it, man. Well, no, actually, you know what? That's that's a good uh, lead into our next story because sometimes it's not. Um, a lot of lot of car shit this week, Tara. A lot of car shit. Driver going a hundred kilometers per hour with dump box up, charge after striking Queensway overpass. And you're saying dump box? It's a dump truck. It's just oh, okay. It's it's the top part of the truck. Um, this is from Canada, Ottawa. Provincial, Ottawa Provincial Police say a truck was traveling tr close to 100 kilometers an hour uh, with its dump box raised when it struck a highway overpass in Ottawa's West End, leaving the box jammed under the overpass for several hours. Here's the best part. The, he hit, because here's here's some video here. There's, there's, there's what's left of the truck. Um, he hit, he had the box up. Just floored it down the fucking highway. Wham! Hits the overpass. Over the truck kept going. The truck fucking kept going. Here's what's. Here's the rest of the truck here. Um, you can barely see it. It's not a great picture, but yeah, there's the rest of the fucking truck. Fifty-three year old Al Almonte man driving the truck has been charged with careless driving. Uh, Ottawa provincial police say a dump truck traveling eastbound. <laughs> The large dump box that struck the overpass became wedged under the bridge while the rest of the vehicle kept moving. This was a fucking cannonball run. Yeah. Movie. Can we also just, I, I love that the Ottawa police abbreviation is OPP. <laughs> I bet they'd try to license that song and Naughty by Nature would be like, no. This, this is like, this is some Smokey and the Bandit shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, the bad guy is in the bed of the truck, so you just... It's, it's like Duke's a hazard level. The statement Friday, the OPP said... I can't read that straight face. So the investigation confirmed, uh, investigation confirmed the truck had been traveling close to 100 kilometers an hour. The dump box rage. You could hear this loud bang. You could feel the thing move. You I had no bet. idea what it was. 
Um, <laughs> Can you imagine driving across that overpass while that happens? Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, th those are already, I mean, it's it's a solid uh, concrete one. The, those aren't supposed to move, and yet all of a sudden that kind of impact? Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. How do you do that? You know, when I used to think when you to drive those those kind of trucks and whatnot, you needed like a license, you needed to learn how to operate. I thought it was such a you, big deal. Apparently not. No, you do. You do. Apparently, you just don't ever need to use your rear view mirror. I mean, to keep on going is like, what was that noise? Well, that was loud. That was loud. Is that thunder? That look like rain. I don't understand. Uh, I mean, God damn. Oh, well, we're, we're just keep, we're just rolling right along. Um, are you from, I know you, you're familiar with it because you were driving down every year, uh, well, all the time because you lived here on the East Coast. Um, if you don't live in America or you don't live in the East Coast, I-95 is kind of a thing. That is Interstate 95. It runs from the tip of Florida all the way to Maine. It goes yeah. from north to south on the east coast of the country. It is huge. And it's, you know, it's in some places it's six lanes. Some places it's eight lanes. It's a gigantic. So it, it is literally one of like the arteries. In Connecticut, it's been in a traffic jam since about 1992. <laughs> it's one of the vital you know, travel routes for the country. So obviously, and it's all, it's usually very crowded. Um, lots of people are always on it. So obviously it's the best place to do fucking donuts. Driver or passenger arrested after doing donuts on I-95 in Boynton Beach. South Florida driver said his, and his pastor were arrested, arrested last weekend. Can't talk tonight. After there were uh after they were part of a group of motorists doing donuts and disrupting traffic on Interstate 95. Not near Ow. Interstate 95, not around Interstate 95, on Interstate 95. How? And hey, look, we got Vidya. There we go. You want to know how? There's how. There's the entire interstate is stopped. All the police and dudes are just spinning around and round across four lanes of traffic. In the middle of the fucking interstate. Uh. Jesus. Vehicles I did this once accidentally. And it was the most terrifying 30 seconds of my fucking life. A donut? Yeah, I'm... I, I'm I was in a fucking Buick LeSabre, which is approximately <laughs> the size of a Carnival cruise ship. It's a boat, yes. Going down 84, which is another highway in the Northeast. Yeah. And I hit something slippery and I fishtailed. Mm. And then I fishtailed back. And then I went all the way around and I wound up facing the wrong way on the highway, six inches from the Jersey barrier. And somehow I didn't hit anything. I don't know how. Fucking angels pushed my car around. And I was supposed to be at my shift at the Old Navy. I called them. I was like, I'm going to have a heart attack and then figure out how to bust a UE on the highway. And I will be in when the fuck I get there. In most places in I-95, the speed limit is 70 miles per hour. Some places it's 65. Some places it's actually 55. But mostly it's 70 miles an hour, especially in the big long stretches. That is a suggestion. Because I have been, go I've gone down I-95 and people have been busted. They, they, they are attempting to go back in time and they don't even have a fucking yeah. DeLorean. Hey, Simba. So yeah. believe me when I say they were risking their life and limb because someone could have just gone through them. Like, not like, like, not even like phase, like just you would have been there and then parts of your car and you... Just, and parts of their car just disappear. Yeah. Just phew. It's like when the Terminator comes back in time, there's that big sphere that eats all everything. 
It would have yeah. been like that. Only part of you just boom gone. Or like the first scene of that show, The Boys, where the guy's holding hands with his girlfriend, and then all of a sudden he's just holding her hands. Yeah. Kind of like that. What in the name of fuck? It's fucking Florida. Why? Is quarantine that bad? Actually, Florida's not even quarantined. No, they don't care. Excuse. They don't care. Disney's fucking open. It's, oh my God, it's still open? Jesus Christ. We're so fucked here. We're so fucked. Yeah. My, my state's doing okay. How is this fucking fun? Jesus. I don't know. That's, like I said, the one time I did that accidentally was the most terrifying 30 seconds of my fucking life. Like, I can't imagine doing this for fun. Well, how could I possibly top that, Tara? Somebody blowing his dick up with an M80? No. Um, I mean, I'm just going according to our pattern. Um, This is, uh, what's this, New Zealand, I believe? Yeah, this is this is New Zealand. Um, wow. Uh, from the department of, you gotta watch your fucking kids. And no, this isn't a repeat. I know it seems like it is, but it's not. Brighton to Pine Hill, 12 year old arrested after stolen bus joyride. A look bus? at the fucking front of that bus. Oh, look, sorry, not in <laughs> sorry, service. Sorry, not in service. <laughs> no shit. I imagine not. Twelve-year-old boy was behind the wheel of a stolen bus that drove across Dunedin and crashed into several parked cars last night. Sergeant Anthony Bond of Dunedin said the boy gained entry to the bus at Ocean View, started it up, and then drove from Brighton via Green Island and Southern Motorway. He had gone to the center of Dunedin, uh, taking the one-way system. During the journey, he has hit in four vehicles and was speeding and swerving in and out of traffic. Yeah, because the steering wheel's like this wide. <laughs> and his feet can't reach the pedals. He's been able to control the bus and has come to a stop on Pine Hill Road, where he ran off, but a short while later was located by the police. Uh, Sergeant Bond said the door of the bus was left slightly open, allowing him to get in. Once he started the keyless bus by pushing a button, Okay, that's that was your first mistake. Yeah. Somebody thought, well, who's going to steal a bus? Who? Which who? is funny that it was that easy because Dan's hot car has keyless start. And if the keys are not within three feet of that button, yeah. he can't start the car. He often has to like jingle the keys at the button like it's a baby. <laughs> so I want to know what technology they're using that the keys same city block well who, who's who's gonna steal a boss and who who could squeeze into this small hole and steal Clearly a boss they don't, show. they don't watch the show people will steal anything on wheels man. <laughs> i just i you, i love this kid i'm thought. kind of surprised somebody hasn't stolen a zamboni <laughs> Yeah. Deadpool. We one, haven't gotten that yet, have one we? One day, one day, <laughs> it's just a matter of time, the odds. Whoever has that on the bingo card is like, God damn it! It's never the Zamboni! Never! Um, I I love how it started swerving and, 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 and waving. You know this kid thought, how hard could it be? And got about halfway through and found the fuck out. Father tells me that I must stay in school so I don't wind up a bus driver. It must be very easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. It's not. Oh, this kid's parents. You are so grounded. I'm free. He already was. Fucking pandemic. Wait, no, it's New Zealand. They got theirs under control. Yeah, they're fine. Damn. You have a great fucking story to tell, though. <laughs> That's like your version of the I was first drunk at six years old story. <laughs> it's a great story. That's if he lives. You're going to be grounded as fuck, but it will be worth it in 20 years. I, I, I fits it, but my would not have lived. My parents would, I, they would have, they, it's that, that old threat. Uh, we could kill you and make another one just like you. I never got that threat. <laughs> My, my parents never threatened to kill me. You already had a backup. They didn't have to threaten you. 
They only had two backups. Well, no, I was the last one. Well, yeah, but still, you know, you were like the spare tire. They didn't have to worry about you as much. I was the only one with the red hair, so they had to keep me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's how that works, yeah. Uh, Otherwise, I probably would have been tossed out on a highway. Because I was a pain in the ass. Jeez, this is beyond a pain in the ass, man. Yeah, I never stole a fucking bus. He's not. This is his parent. This this is the the problem with doing this shit when you're that age. Your parents will never let this shit go. Anytime no. you want to do anything, anytime you're like, Dad, can I go to the movies tonight? I don't know. You're gonna steal a bus. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna hear about this for the rest of your life. So you may as well make it worth it. Dad, I've decided I'm going to med school. You're gonna take a bus to get there. Maybe. Ugh. All right. Last story this week is one of those where I'm like, how do people find the energy for this shit? How, how in God's name of all the things you can be doing, how the fuck this is kind of epic and stupid all at the same time. Nightmare neighbor feud nets hefty fine in British Columbia court. Six year saga ended with a Christmas time incident of a man attacking his neighbor's wall with a jackhammer. After a neighborly feud over a retaining wall escalated into a Christmas time act of jackhammer vandalism. Is Christmas court. time like the time or is that a place? Yeah. Like, could... did this happen at Christmas time or is Christmas time a place? Oh, no. Provincial court court has ordered Campbell's Campbell Rivers Reno Pellegrin to pay sixteen thousand eight hundred and one dollars in restitution. At first, the neighbors Reno Pellegrin and John Wielden uh, got along fine. They shared landscape materials and cut the other, each other's weeds. Two thousand eight, John Wielden built a ten meter long retaining wall that, in parts, was on Pellegrin's side of the property line by up to nineteen centimeters. Up to 19 centimeters. Who cares? Not meters. Not, not. Who cares? Who cares? Centimeters. Cent centimeters. The little ones. Not like the I super can't little ones. I'm a fuck about that. Like, oh, it's a foot over the front. <clears throat> oh, well, that's a foot less grass I gotta cut. But it would light a fuse over what became an over -escal ever escalating series of provocations, complaints, and counter complaints. Beginning with Pellegrin's decision in 2014 to dump 10 kilograms of dog droppings into the yard of Wielden and his wife. That's fine. He put the feces there as a message to the Wielden to stay off his property. In the year since, the neighbors regularly called police and bylaw against each other. A potted plant was thrown from yard to yard until it ended up on the Wielden's roof. At one point, Wielden and Pellegrin engaged, engaged in a brief physical standoff. Wielden armed with a rock and Pellegrin with a weed eater. It ended with That's, Wielden being arrested for assault. It's not balanced weaponry. <laughs> I've got a don't rock. Bring a, don't bring a rock to a weed eater fight. <laughs> British Columbia Provincial Court Judge Catherine Crockett would ultimately determine that Wielden was justified picking up the rock because uh, Pellegrin approached him with the weed eater in hand after insulting Wielden as an unemployed loser. In court, Pellegrin was also accused of regularly dumping snow and yard waste over the property line. He was accused of spray painting the word remove onto the disputed retaining wall and cowered onto a wheelbarrow facing the Wielden's home. On occasions, he came eye to eye to eye with one of the Wielden's meanwhile. Pellegrin was accused of performing a litany of obscene gestures, including miming oral sex, grabbing his crotch while saying suck it, and expelling gas from both ends of his body. <laughs> Let's just pause here and say, if you could fart and belch on demand, yeah, that's kind of impressive. That's that's a lot. Why aren't you on Broadway? Um, in court, the Pellegrin family also alleged active aggressions by the Wieldens. They alleged the Wieldens put garbage in their driveway and a dead snake on their trampoline. The conflict would peak on Christmas 2015 when Pellegrin taking a jackhammer to the retaining wall while growing ho, 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 Merry Christmas in a Santa Claus voice. In a video taken of the incident, Pellegrin says, hope you and yours have a Merry Christmas. This is what happens when you don't get along with your neighbors. Call the cops about every little thing. 
Sherry Wheel then asked him to stop before calling the police. After the, the arrival of the police, however, Pelgrim began jackhammering again, which aggravated the officer's concussion and caused her to retreat. Crockett would denounce the Jack Henry as a vindictive, pointless, dangerous, and unlawful act. Court case was instigated in spring of 2017. So this has gone on for three years as a court Over case. 19 centimeters. 19 centimeters of a wall. Who cares? How the fuck do you have the Jesus Christ? How do you have this much energy? I'm a little disappointed that he wasn't yelling, now I have a jackhammer, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> right? <laughs> the, but, Who has the time? I have all the other shit going on right now. And not just right now, but over the past decade. This has been kind of a wild decade. This started around the time the entire in economy fucking crashed the first time. Like, do you just have nothing else to do? Like, get, get a dog! Well, they said animal control, so at least one of them has a dog. Learn a trade! You better be okay. Seriously, take up whittling. Yeah. Make your own maple syrup, whatever you fucking Canadians do. <laughs> There's hockey on pretty much year round, right? Watch some hockey. Just what? There's like a billion cooking videos on YouTube. You Pick don't... some and go. No, no, you're going to get a feud with your fucking neighbor. Take a road trip. See, here's the thing about starting shit with your neighbors, and I learned this a long time ago. And I try to be fairly genial with my neighbors around. Um, because I don't take anything like, like for, for an example, um, the neighbor's kids shot an arrow into my workshop roof. It's like a fucking arrow with like a point at tip and everything. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> but I kind of let it go. Cause at the nobody was hurt. It's no big deal. I can patch it up. It's a it's a fucking day. It's a, it's a, a workshop roof. Big you deal. Be a little careful where you shoot your arrows. Right. Thank you. I didn't decide, you know, to go out there and pee on the trampoline and uproot the tomato trees and shove them in my pants and shit. What the fuck? <laughs> didn't you have a neighbor threaten to kill you? Uh no. Well, yeah. He thought I was messing with his stuff. I got, you gotta live with these people. Yeah. That's part of what be, it's isn't just like renting a place. That's part of what neighbors are. You're kind of stuck with them. Just, yeah. you do what you gotta do. You do what they gotta do. Load them a cup of sugar sometimes. Just Everybody's just trying to get the fuck along. Don't haul out a goddamn jackhammer. <laughs> Jesus. Don't be farting at the kids. What's wrong with you? Picking up a dead snake and then taking the time to carry it to their yard. Like, seriously, what the, the fuck? There's a lot of. You're focused on the wrong shit. Okay? Yeah. Who has the time? Who has the energy? Because the last thing I want to be doing is when I'm trying to just fucking chill and relax. Is I'm worried about, oh God, is the neighbor doing some fucking Tom and Jerry bullshit in the yard or something? <laughs> it's like, no, not Tom and Jerry. It's like fucking Daffy Duck. Yeah. Like fucking Daffy Duck and, and, and Bugs Bunny. Wiley Coyote. Yeah, so you need that ordering shit from Acme. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, why? It's the first thing we learned this week. Ain't nobody got time for this shit. No. You ain't the Hatfields and the McCoys. God I mean, damn. I guess right now, literally, we all have time for this shit, but that's not an excuse. That's not the point, right? I mean, this this wasn't happened. This happened. This started like a while right. back. Yeah. To keep it up. 19 that... centimeters. 19... I can't imagine caring that much. I like, mean, is that where you buried the body? I mean, when the fence I had came down in the hurricane last year and we got it, we had to, to put it back up. Nobody was out here, you know, with a fucking surveyor to figure no. out whose side of the lot. It's just like this got to just put up here. Fuck it. This I don't understand people in property lines. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you go five feet into my yard, then I'm going to have to do. But like 19 centimeters. Go... A foot over the property line. I'm not going to die. No. It's fine. 
just fucking that's that's the first thing we learned you gotta watch your goddamn kids yeah or they'll steal a fucking bus oh we have today man just stealing buses and shit we've learned people will do donuts on the interstate fuck you that do not give a shit um we've learned people will not check to see if the back part of the truck is down you gotta check your clearance for fuck's sake um we also and learned you yeah you will use math in your life and we're not even talking about the trigonometry fucking chinese algebra shit you're probably not going to use calculus unless you go into a specific field where you need it but like basic multiplication is going to come up and finally we've learned that if you're not even the most popular cartoon squid maybe don't start shit with maybe, maybe aim a little lower than starting shit with dolly fucking Parton. just don't start shit with dolly what the fuck did dolly Parton ever do to anybody nothing she was a better person than him yeah 